Petrol and diesel prices have been hiked by 10 rupees a litre each since March 21st. And India's retail inflation accelerated to 6.95% in March, its highest in 17 months. It is above the upper limit of the Reserve Bank of India's tolerance band for a third straight month. Meanwhile, there seems to be no immediate end to the war. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that peace talks with Ukraine have hit a dead end. The war has disrupted supply chain and considerably raised commodity prices. After a lull during the assembly polls, the prices of fuels have again started increasing. Consumers have been demanding relief for long. The government, on the other hand, is not relenting. It has not slashed excess duty, despite wide expectations that it would provide consumers some cushion from the sharp rise in retail prices. Meanwhile, Chief Economic Advisor V. Anantanageshwaran recently said that if crude oil persistently stays above $110 a barrel, then the government, oil marketing companies and consumers will have to share the burden. The benchmark Brent crude is currently trading at $106 a barrel, down from a recent high of $128 and the probability of oil persistently staying above $110 a barrel is also low. Analysts expect it to average at around $100 this year. The centre had last slashed excise duty on fuel in early November last year by 5 rupees a litre on petrol and 10 rupees a litre on diesel. Gains from that move have been wiped out now. Things are expected to get worse in the near term as the full effect of the spike in crude oil and global energy prices following Russia's invasion of Ukraine will be seen this month, as the pass-through to consumers at fuel pumps was delayed. In its latest policy review last week, the RBI opted to leave the repo rate unchanged at a record low of 4%, even as inflation shows no signs of abating anytime soon. It wants to help revive the pandemic-hit economy. Economists believe that the higher-than-expected retail inflation may trigger a rate hike cycle from June. Governor Shaktikanta Das said the RBA has now put inflation before growth in its sequence of priorities. If you pass through March uh, CPI inflation data, we find that a large part of the upside surprise has actually been on the back of extremely strong momentum in food prices. Uh, and this we believe could continue into the months of April and May. Also remember April is likely to see uh, a larger pass through of uh, adjustment in fuel costs that had begun uh, towards the end of the month of March. Some burden sharing of fuel costs between consumers, uh, oil marketing companies and government could happen at the current stage. And from a fiscal perspective, this is doable, largely because we believe FI22 saw robust tax collections, which in fact exceeded uh, the revised estimates that the budget had put out. And second, because LIC disinvestment getting pushed into FI23 offers a broad comfort as far as revenues is concerned. For the second half of the year, we could see inflation moderate somewhere in the range of 5.4 to 5.9 on anticipation of a normal monsoon outturn, easing of some of the disruptions on the supply side that have brewed up yet again and lower than trend growth that could inhibit a complete pass through of higher input prices. Seasonality effect and elevated global food prices, especially edible oils and cereals, will keep food inflation high in the summer months. But there are expectations that inflation will moderate from the third quarter. So the government may not be very keen on reducing the excess duty significantly. It may choose to wait. The government will also be wary of pushing up bond yields further if it chooses to increase borrowings to make up for any excess duty reduction. However, we cannot rule out the possibility of the government partially absorbing further increase in fuel prices to offer a small reprieve in inflation and boost consumer sentiment. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.